Gilding. He's got a lot Gilding. of bomb. So Gilding to throw first here. Gilding v Hudson for a place in the second round to face Jamie Caven. Looking to join Yoko Kamula and David Pallet. They've already won their matches this afternoon. Hudson hasn't really produced his best on the European Tour to date. When I spoke to him earlier on, he was saying, oh, I keep beating seeded players here and there, and then I turn up to these European events and I play like a donut, uh, were his words. It's quite fitting in Berlin. John F. Kennedy called himself a donut here. A slight translation issue. <laughs> Well, both players are very deliberate in their throw. Certainly won't be the speed of an Adrian Lewis and Van Gogh, as we've seen in the Premier League on Thursday in Aberdeen. Yes, but it is uh, possibly the first two or three legs. It's a guy who makes less mistakes, that gets control of the game. We see the previous game with David Pallet going 4 nil up against oh. Jamie Lewis. Jamie Lewis, one dart and a double in the first two legs. It's so different, Dan. You know, you win the first two, you're two nil up, but all of a sudden you lose them, and then you're four nil down before you know it. And well, I feel this one may go the same way. Well, it's on 40 from Andrew Gilding. And Peter Hudson needs something similar to apply some pressure. Is he going to stay there or switch? Switches down. 99. It's 104 for Andrew Gilding to get his first leg on the board. Looking to do it in level 15 darts. And finds the treble he wants. Now wants double top. Finds it as well. 104 checkout. And Andrew Gilding holds his throat. An impressive 100 plus checkout. And that's the kind of thing that has seen him. Have this upturn in form lately. Right, I mean, yeah, he's been around for a little while, Andrew Gilding. People might have seen his name cropping up on various players' championships around the place, and he wasn't pulling up any trees. What, What is it about a player that can suddenly just spark them into life and, and go out and beat the best? I think what it is, because, you know, when he's on the pro tour, he's playing brilliant players every single game, every single week. There is tournaments every week now, and we do have them on a Saturday and a Sunday. So you either get better or you get beat. You get mullered on it. And what Andrew's done, I think he's learning the game. He's learning how to hold his bottle, as we call it. And he's getting better. He's probably fine at practice regime, as we talked about earlier on with Jamie and Dave Pallet. You know, that's working for him. He's enjoying the game because he's on the way up. He's got no, as what we call, you know, in the big games, no scar tissue. So he's enjoying every minute at the moment because he's on that way up and uh, you know you can see that in his game you know we, we walk around I'm, I'm there most weekends and we see these players and we know you know who's the dangerous players who are the players on form it don't always work out when you, you know, as a pundit we know that I mean Barney beat uh, Robert Thornton and I actually tipped Robert Thornton to beat Barney because he was coming in with the form of the last weekend but uh, you know nine times out of ten you normally go by the form book you're not going to go far wrong you mentioned about him sort of learning the, the bottle. I mean, a lot of people will say that that's something you just, you're born with, you have it or you don't, but in, you reckon you can learn how to handle certain situations. That's what it is. Definitely. What happens is, like I said, you're playing all the top players. You know, it isn't like you're going to an Open where there's three, 4,000 people, where the first two, three, four games, let's say my day back in the 90s, are easier games or very easy. So you get into a rhythm. On the Pro Tour, if, you, if you're not ready with the first leg you lose and that's what people like Andrew and Peter and a lot of other people players are doing they're learning that if, they, if they're not ready they're going to lose and that's what they're doing and that's why the pro tour is so hard that's why you're seeing people like the Taylors and all that losing to people or players that the public don't know they're learning their trade a brilliant 174 from Andrew Gilding there to apply the pressure, but Peter Hudson's looking at taking out 111. He's quite a bit short of the double top he needed there. But that superb visit from Goldfinger means he's going to get two darts at a double for a 2-0 lead. This is for a break of throw. 
and takes it out. Very assured stuff from Andrew Gilding. We were only just talking about, you know, the bottle and taking your chances. And that is the last two years playing on the Pro Tour. That's where Andrew Gilding has learnt his trade. You know, not messing about. You're given a chance. Five, double 16. Don't even mess around missing the first dart. It's straight in. And at the moment, that's where Gilding's game is. Yeah, pretty impressive stuff from Andrew Gilding. And... You're right, yeah, two darts at a double. Both have found their mark. And dangerous, that's the word that you use, Rod. Nobody will fancy facing him at all. Jamie Caven will, you know, he'll know he's got a tough test on his hand if he has to come up against Gildin. And right now, you'd say he's the overwhelming favourite. I'll just rattle off some of the people he beat in making those uh, two finals. He had one in February, beat Barney, Wade, Taylor, and uh, then lost to Bunting in the final. That was uh, Steve Bunting's first PDC title win. And then the following March, beat Caven, Klassen, Michael Smith, Darren Webster, man in form, and beat Wade again before losing to Gary Anderson, despite throwing 107 average. I mean, that is top dots, and this is pretty good as well, with a One maximum. First maximum of the match to add to the 174 he had in the previous leg. Well, I think them, those names you rolled off emphasises what we've been saying, that he is on form at the moment and uh, fair play to him I like to see a guy that gets up there and you know, there's no gamesmanship in this man you'll never see that but he knows how to hit that treble 20 and this is a great leg of darts and that's what you've got to do with the throw don't give your opponent a chance of getting near you on the throw James Wade one of the best players in the world obviously Phil Taylor's great but James Wade holding his throw and that's what Gilding's got to do here. And he certainly after 12 darts, only want the double top. Now, he's 100% on the doubles. If he misses, I've got a feeling this will be just above the top wire and he gets it with the second. But he doesn't miss. Three for three. Andrew Gilding, impressive stuff. Just shrugging off that 177 that Peter Hudson had thrown at him. Very, very impressive from Goldfinger. Peter Hudson having hit a 177. 140. Next visit's a 140. Just desperate to get a first leg on the board, the man from Eccles. Well, there it is, 100 average for Gilding. And to be fair to Peter Hudson, 96.7. You know, you're not going to lose that many games on the tour with that sort of average unless you're going to walk into an Andrew Gilding that's absolutely flying. Yeah. Key point. I think he's only had one dot a double so far, Peter Hudson, though. The one for tops for a 1-1-1, one, 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 which he missed. Gilding just hasn't given him many chances. And he's back in that treble 20 again. Whoa. Neck and neck in this one. Yeah, you can see that just the one dart at a double for Peter Hudson in the opening three legs. But this is a massive, massive leg. He has to hold his own throw. 4 0 down. Surely there's no way back from here. Good leg of darts, though. Only won one match on the European Tour, Pete Hudson, in the last three years. Managed to beat uh, Alan Tappen a couple of years ago. Since then, it's always been first-round exits for him. It's a tough school. That's why a lot of us ain't playing no more. <laughs> This is a good leg of darts from Peter Hudson, though, on for a 13 darter. Is Andrew Gilding going to put him under any pressure here? Fails to stay straight. It's not going to be a great deal of pressure, it has to be said. Oh, none at all. Take your time, Peter. It's all yours, this leg, surely. He looks to work his way down from there. Little bit too much, Peter. Double 10. Well, nowhere near any of those three darts. No, they were a long way off, Dan. And that is tension and, and pressure for you. You can see Peter Hudson over the shoulder of Andrew Gilding, just talking to himself. And, and Gilding's, you know, just going to throw a little spanner in the works. Well, that's a bit scruffy, that one. But now the pressure on Peter Hudson to take this double ten out and does it. Gets his first leg on the board. That will settle him down a bit because the first three darts of those doubles were wayward. But it was only to hold his throw, so Gilded knows that if he holds his throw throughout this match, he's going to walk off and be playing tomorrow afternoon. 
Well, this is some response after losing your first leg of the match. 140. What have you got, Peter Hudson? Responds in kind. Yeah, good switch there. First two darts were low. Straight down to those 19s, as Hudson, Hudson should do with his. Will he go up? No, he's going to stay on there. That's so wide, he can nice. find the treble 19 and does. An edgy leg here from both players, but an ultra important leg for Hudson to win. 95. Important last start from Peter Hudson leaves him on a finish. It's the big one. But it is gettable. And if Andrew Gilding can't find a treble, well, he does. Important dart, that. And sensible stuff to go for the bullseye. And it's not going to happen, so Andrew Gilding will be coming back. Look at it, 78 for a 4-1 lead. Didn't really put the pressure on Gilding that Hudson needed to do. So double 12 now for a 4-1 lead and four out of four on those doubles for Gildin. And as strong as you can get for Gildin. A nice little 14 dart leg there on the throw and well, you're not going to lose many matches. Playing darts like that. And there we have it, 100% for Gildin, but only 20%. One out of five for Peter Hudson. Yeah, deadly around the edge of the board, Andrew Gilding. And not bad on the treble at the moment either. Maximum oh, for Andrew Gilding. Oh, Second 180 of the match for him to add to the 174 he hit earlier on. Oh, and is Peter Hudson looking for his first maximum of the match? Not to be. A few boos already. <laughs> Wanting the nine data. Well, I was uh, watching and talking to Phil Taylor earlier on in the practice room, and, and I must have witnessed him have eight, nine chances of a nine data in, a, in an hour's practice. So, for you Taylor fans, he's certainly coming back on song. Darts are going in nice and straight. Talking to him about the grip. It was all about the grip. The target of now. Give him the grip that feels comfortable in his hand. Oh, as Gildin oh, hits his second maximum of this leg. And against the throw, what a great leg of darts here from Gildin. 46 after 9. Well, he's 100% at the moment on doubles. Can he carry on with that percentage? Well, it'd be more surprising if he didn't take this out and take a 5-1 lead. 10 for double 18. And just so, oh, this is absolutely so clinical from Andrew Gildin. So Andrew, 11 dart leg for Andrew Gildin. He's within one now. Throwing for a place in the second round where Jamie Caven awaits. Caven, the number seven seed. 134. Yeah, it's a good solid game of darts. 102 and a half average from Gildin. And that will compete with anybody Whoa. on the circuit. And, and that's why he has been competing with everybody on the circuit. Oh, look at that. Only two legs above 15 darts. Gilding helped out by not missing a dart at a double. And be a brave man to say you're going to keep that up all weekend. But if he were, then he's a genuine contender here. Absolutely right. Now that's an impressive array of darts from Andrew Gilding. <laughs> And possibly Peter Hudson's thinking, what have I done wrong to walk into Gildin hitting every single double that he's pitched at? And there we have it. I mean, just under a 95 average from Hudson. 
and he's missed loads of well five darts and four darts of the double I should say so it's not that bad but uh, as we said that from Gildin pretty impressive yeah it's not been a case of Peter Hudson playing like a donut really it's Andrew Gildin just playing out of his skin Lonely place up on stage, <laughs> isn't it? When you've got a guy hitting every single double he throws for, it's a lonely place. Yes, it certainly is. And, and you know, you can, I can read his mind thinking, you know, come on, give me a break. Start missing a little bit. Well, there's a Whoa! bit of fight left in Peter Hudson oh, as he hits his first maximum of the match. But Andrew Gilding's looking at 129 here to seal the deal. He'll start on the 19s. The trouble 20 for Bull. Well, he sets it up nicely, but Peter Hudson is looking at 118 to stay alive. Well, he should get a shot here. Don't miss the big number, Peter. Doesn't, so double top. And hits it. Well, 118 check out from Peter Hudson. Keeps him in this just. And it was a break of throw. And there we have the highest checkouts. And Hudson with that 118 leads it against Gilden 104. You say it so many times, Dan. You know, you work so hard to break the throw of your opponent. Do not throw it away easy when you step up. And that's exactly what he's done. Whether Gilden's going to punish him for it, we'll see. Only half punishes him, I suppose we could call that. Well, there is no margin for error anymore for Peter Hudson. Needs to win the next four legs. And you would think that would mean Andrew Gilding has to start missing at some point if Peter Hudson is going to stay alive. And that is a body blow for the big man. Gilding's average still around the 100 mark. Five or six points clear of Peter Hudson. Well, he's grabbed the treble, but Gilding has stolen the darts here. He's looking to race away in this leg. Well, you think he's going to get nine darts from this 2-7-2. Oh, he's going to need all nine as well. Now, this is a, a little bit of the door opening for Peter Hudson, although he threw first in this leg, he'd give it away, but he's got to find, is he staying on the treble or treble 18? One. Done a good job with the ton. Now the advantage to Peter Hudson. A decent cover shot there from Andrew Gilding. Leaves him on a finish. And if Peter Hudson can't find a treble here, and he's not with his first two darts. One. Important last dart. But this is a chance. If the first two go in, you'd fancy him on the double eight. It's not going to happen. So what is he going to leave himself? Well, he's going to leave himself double 18. So Peter Hudson has to take this out. Yes, he'll be looking at the treble 18 with his first dart. Now, it's 18 bull or treble 18 for double seven. Oh, and... How many times we say it, Dan, under pressure, missing that big number? I mean, that, that could cost him the match. It's certainly going to cost him a lot, that one dart. Double 18 for Gildin. For a 16 darter, and Andrew Gildin wins 6-2. He didn't miss a single shot at doubles, and Goldfinger is through to...